In this video, we're going to look at the general form uh, for an arithmetic progression, which is really useful. And watch the video with numerical examples first. So, for example, this one's an arithmetic progression 3, 7, 11, 15, 19. It's starting at 3 and it's going up in 4s. So, I could say if this is called the sequence A, uh, A1 is 3 and AN plus 1 is AN plus 4. When we talk about the general form of an arithmetic progression, we're going to say, okay, well, could I summarize all different sorts of arithmetic progressions in the same way that when we do straight lines, we sometimes talk about y equals mx plus c, and m and c being different values that we, you know, we could have, and that would describe, you know, almost all the different sorts of lines that you can get. Um, so what about that for arithmetic progression? So I could say, well, what about if my, um, if my sequence started at a number, let's just call it a, where that's here in this sequence a would be 3 and then um, arithmetic progressions work by adding on uh, a number each time so if I add on D my next number is a plus D so in this sequence here we've got a equals 3 and D equals 4 so if I add on D again I get a plus 2 times D if I add on D again I get a plus 3 times D etc okay so um, so this would be my um, my sequence. So this would be the you know the term a one, a two, a three, a four. I mean again, this maybe it's slightly confusing to have the a's here. There's no reason these ones have to be. This has to be called a as well. Perhaps that's uh, just so you don't get confused between the a and the a subscript. Let's call it x one, x two, x three, and x four. And let's have this whole sequence being. Um, determined in terms of x instead so um, but you could use any of that term I mean a3 is different from just a but anyway so the general form for this sequence then would say well okay let's do this term let's do this term to term sequence well for a general arithmetic progression here this is my general AP it would say well x1 is always a so a is just what we're calling the first term and to go from xn to xn plus 1 we add on d okay so uh, we start at a and from one time to the next we add on d so we've got a a plus d a plus 2d a plus 3d so for example this one x4 is a plus 3d so that's 3 plus 12 that's 15 that is uh, x4 so that works and you know d could be could be negative as well. I mean, I could have a sequence say nine, seven, five, three, one, and in this one would have uh, a equals nine and d equals minus two. To go from one term to the next, we're subtracting, subtracting two. But that's my general form um, as a term-to-term -term definition of an arithmetic regression. To get a general form uh, for the nth term definition. Well, at the end of the previous video, we did an example with fractions. We suggested a slightly different way of writing down um, the formula. Uh, and that's what we'll do here for the general term. I'm going to say that xn is, well, I'm going to start with the first term a, and now I'm going to add on d a certain number of times. Now, let's think about how many times we add on d. Well, if this one is x1, I haven't added on any d's. For x2, I've added on 1d. For x3, 2d's. For x4, I've added on 3d's. So the number of d's that I add on is almost always one less than the term number n. So I need to add on n minus 1 times d. And that is our general form for an arithmetic progression. It's a little bit confusing, but sometimes people also use the letter L for the last term of an arithmetic regression. Now in these ones, I kind of assume they go on forever, but let's say it didn't go on forever and it just had a certain number of terms. Uh, let's say it's got capital N terms, so you know it goes x1, x2, x3, and at some point it gets to x capital N and it, and it then just stops. Um, the last term L would then be uh, xn, which would be a plus n minus one times d for that for that value. Um, and the slightly confusing thing is sometimes people use this little n for the number of terms rather than using a different uh, letter. Um, 
but it's just saying the same thing. You know, if I've got a particular term, let's say n here is 100, and I'm saying there's only 100 terms in the sequence, then that last term would just be uh, the case for n equals 100. And there we go. That's the two different types of um, two different types of example there for uh, the nth term definition and the term-to-term -term definition of an of an arithmetic progression.